yeah, it's time to yeah, buckle your seatbelt and move to Ireland uh, really quickly. Uh, and there we have uh, Kenny McCoy that uh, will uh, will give us a tour of um, of the business. Um, yes, Kenny, do you want to introduce yourself and maybe then we will share the video really briefly? Absolutely. Um, thanks very much. Justin, and uh, thanks to uh, the Robismo Project and Irish Rural Link for inviting me here today to, to present our, our local business. I'm delighted to be here. And uh, well done to Ali Echo on the fantastic presentation, superb project and fantastic, uh, fantastic plants and great to see. Okay. Um, I suppose starting here, Justin, we had uh, we had our short intro video and I'll uh, run through a couple of slides then just go into a little bit more depth um, about our business and how we started and how we how we worked along in the last 10 years with, with local supports. So I suppose the video we might start with as, a, as a, an intro. Perfect, thank you. Here we are at our processing yard located near Mohill in County Leitrim. We process biomass for the domestic, commercial and industrial heating markets in the form of firewood and wood chip. We take deliveries of pulpwood logs from the local private sector forestry in Leitrim and surrounding counties. The pulpwood is stacked in large stacks for varying periods of time in order to reach the desired moisture content by means of natural air drying. Once the desired moisture content is achieved, the material is then chipped or processed into firewood for the end market. We initially started out by processing firewood in the mid-2000s. Our firewood is processed with a PTO-powered firewood processor. The fire processor is a versatile machine and was easily adapted to our existing site. Our firewood is sold in bulk, loose loads, net bags or larger one cubic meter bulk bags. Following on from our initial venture into firewood processing, in 2009 we decided to diversify further and began processing wood chip for the commercial and industrial biomass heating markets. Once chipped, we store our dry wood chip here in a building with slatted sides to allow airflow through it. The wood chip here is typically 25% moisture content, is destined for the small to medium scale heating market, users such as hotels, swimming pools, agricultural settings such as piggeries, poultry growers and mushroom growers. On the other hand, we store our wetter wood chip with a greater bulk density in a more robust building. There is less ventilation here, and this material is destined for the industrial heating market, or power generation. Our pulpwood storage yard, where we store between two and a half and three thousand tons of pulpwood per year to allow natural air drying. As pulpwood is collected in local forests in Leitrim and surrounding counties, the incoming trucks enter the yard, offload into given stacks. The material is then allowed to air dry in the stacks for a period of six months up to 18 months, depending on the market it is going to. Longer storage times achieves significantly lower moisture content that is demanded for the smaller scale. Our logs come from local private sector and farm forestry. Pulpwood, the term it is given, as it cannot be used for commercial timber production. It cannot be used since it has generally a defect, such as a twist, a fork, or a size constraint. Pulpwood is a lower value product than commercial timber. Our current wood chipper is a finished built Kesla wood chipper. We position the chipper beside the stacks of pulpwood, use the onboard crane to load the pulpwood directly into the wood chipper. The wood chipper then blows it through its chute into an awaiting trailer. The chipper is PTO powered by a 350 horsepower case tractor. This wood chipper can process one arctic load or 30 tons of fresh pulpwood in 45 minutes. 
By using different screens in the wood chipper, we can alter the physical size of the wood chips produced. We can screen from 30 mil up to 70 millimeters, depending on the customer requirements. To further ensure our security of supply and guarantee consistent moisture content, we are currently installing a force drying system. This system will work in tandem or as a backup to our existing natural air drying process to guarantee consistent moisture content for the end user year round regardless of prevailing weather conditions. Prevailing weather conditions, particularly in Ireland, can hamper drying performance of natural air drying and result in lower quality biomass reaching the end user. The force drying system will standardise our moisture content going into the future. When one of our customers requires wood chip, the delivery vehicle enters our yard and is loaded by our wheel loader. The delivery vehicle is usually a 120 cubic metre walking floor trailer. During the winter months, our peak heating season, we dispatch over 16 truckloads per week. In a year, we process over 10,000 tonnes per annum. Thank you, Kenny, for the introduction. I think you will uh, move on with a bit more in-depth uh, presentation of the business. Yes, yeah, so I'll share my screen and hopefully you'll, you'll be able to see my, my slides. I can see the slide okay, if you want. coming. Huh? I was got, I was getting can you see them yet? Uh, it said started there. Share here. Should be but... fine. Huh? Yes, perfect. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Um, so I was scratching the surface a little and and. How are you? going in depth a little bit more as to who we are and where we are and where we came from. Um, our business is Macaulay Wood Fuels. It's a, it, it developed really from my father's uh, previous, we had a landscaping business and we diversified further into uh, biomass processing just as a, as a small, small family business in the northwest of Ireland. We are located near the town of Mohill in South Leitrim. Um, I suppose northwest Midlands area. Um, Leitrim would be it's it's the typically a very a, a low population density with the lowest population of, of all the counties in Ireland. Um, the main I suppose occupation here largely our, our land use is is uh, obviously agriculture and uh, livestock farming, um, mm. and forestry has been a, a growing aspect particularly in, in Leitrim, as it has across Ireland, but particularly in, in Leitrim because of the, the suitability of the soil types, the suitability of the climate, and also how it, um, how it stacks up against traditional farming. Forestry provides a, quite, a, I suppose, a competitive uh, alternative to farming. Um, and it, in many cases, particularly in, in private farm forestry uh, sectors, it, it complements farming very well. Um, so from from where we started in in the, the mid two thousands with firewood, we developed further. Got it started with firewood, moved into wood chip. Uh, we became WFQA certified in two thousand and thirteen. WFQA is the Wood Fuel Quality Assurance Scheme. It's an industry-led scheme in Ireland um, for the, the certifying the quality of, of uh, wood biomass in, uh, in Ireland and other biomasses also. Um, so as mentioned, we started out processing firewood and we've seen a, a little clip of that in the, in the video. Um, this stemmed from, I suppose, a step to diversify our landscaping business. It's fit very well with the business and um, the seasonal activity of firewood relative to landscaping and the existing infrastructure we had so it was kind of a case of looking at what we had and when we were doing landscaping in terms of equipment and resources and and and, and sheds and just a small step into firewood processing was a natural transition but from there um we noticed that some of the raw material we were sourcing was not suitable for firewood. 
So we started considering the the uh, alternative market of wood chip for the the biomass heating market. Initially, this was coming out of the recession in Ireland and in, in two thousand and nine, um, there was slower um, investment in in the biomass market. So in the earlier years, we predominantly process material for the agricultural setting. So for animal or livestock bedding, um, and this uh, provided us a foothold to, to, uh, to, to access a, a ready-made market um, while the, I suppose, biomass heating market was developing, but also as we grew and matured in order to be robust enough to meet the market. So it gave us a foothold, the agricultural market did. Um, and I suppose... From, from say 2009, we remained very small, a very small uh, processing business with, with smaller equipment. Um, it really was just, it was on par with, with our firewood processing. It wasn't until uh, about 2017, 2018, when we upgraded some of our, our equipment and we, we took, a, I suppose, a step change forward and went to an, into a, a more professional um, stream of, of biomass processing. And for the last two years, we've processed over 10,000 tonnes per annum, but we have capacity for a lot more um, as, as uh, the market develops further. And our raw material, uh, primarily from the Northwest region, um, biomass by its, its nature, it's, it's a very, it's an expensive material to transport because of its low bulk density. Um, and it's a low value product so it is it is paramount for us to focus on the, the local region and source material within a in a, a, a quite a restricted radius of of our location but this this works kind of well for us because the region we are located within is is, is a very strong forest region there's a, a, a significant forest resource in this region and it will be growing in the future as uh, there has been significant interest in forestry in the last decade. Um, and the material that primarily we use, as mentioned, it's it's forest-derived uh, logs, but it's not just any log. I suppose that the material, the, the market, or the, the, the source of the material, it is from commercial forestry. Commercial forestry is where uh, trees will be planted in a, in, a, in a commercial plot. They will be harvested and replanted on ongoing cycles. And I suppose that's part of the key to the sustainability of, of forest resource, but also our resource and, and our business is the fact that the material is constantly replenished and there is no um, non-commercial material used. It's not like a tree is cut and, and not replanted or not replaced. It, it's, it's constantly replaced in cycles. But from that also, the, 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 the forest market here, it, the, or the forestry industry, it's, it's obviously targeting the highest value products. The highest value product is, is saw, saw log material, logs for uh, commercial lumber production. So going to sawmills and making roof trusses for houses and, the next grade would be a, a, a smaller uh, diameter grade, typically would be pallet wood. You would have also stake wood um, for fencing, for livestock, for the agricultural market. So really the, 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 the last material that, that, we, that, that we derive our, our biomass from is pulp wood. And pulp wood is, um, as mentioned briefly in the, in the video clip, it's uh, the lowest value product from the forestry industry it's typically um, has a defect such as a fork as a twist as a bend its diameter decreases too too rapidly any defect that would prevent it from being used as a as a as a piece of of a, lo a log to produce a piece of timber uh, for building or construction or, or, or a typical use so it is it is effectively the waste product of the forest industry that we're using um, and as well as that the market, the, the, the forest industry in particular, the market that we, we, we access is the private forest sector. Um, it's quite a, I suppose in our region in the Northwest, it's quite a, a it's a fragmented um, network of, of uh, sources of forest plots. Typically in this region, they're, they're smaller sites. 
they can be a little bit fragmented in terms that it's it's multiple different suppliers, different owners um, across across a wider area. So how we specifically access this market um, what is through a, a number of suppliers, a, a main supplier that, that we uh, purchase material off is Western Forestry Co-op, also located in the Northwest. And Western Forestry Co-op manage um, on behalf of forest owners, manage the forest sites. So it it um, it assists us work, working with Western Forestry Co-op assists us in in accessing the fragmented forest sector in the northwest region. But not only only pulp wood logs, we can also use um, alternative materials such as brash, so like slash or lop and top. It comes from various names. So residues, further residues, uh, are further waste products effectively from the forest sector. We also can process slab wood and um, slabs from uh, the sawmilling sector, smaller sawmilling. We're also not, not um, restricted in species. Um, we can use species that, that typical commercial sawmills um, wouldn't necessarily use. Um, again, as it's, it's, it's a very local operation um, and we're restricted by the physical nature of the product we have to keep everything very local so the supply chain is, is a local supply chain we we operate with uh, local haulage contractors who collect the material in the forest sites and and haul it back to our yard where they offload and we process the logs are stacked in uh, large sacks as mentioned in the video for periods of of up from six months up to 18 months depending on the inclement weather, the, the, the specific customer the material is going to go to, and the, the varying periods of time allows us to achieve um, different moisture contents by natural air drying. Um, once the material has reached the desired moisture content, we then position the wood chipper beside the stacks, uh, lift from the stacks with the, with the cranes and feed it directly into the wood chipper, and we get our wood chip out the other end of the wood chipper. The wood chip can be blown directly into uh, awaiting trailers or into concrete or into sheds uh, for further storage. And also because of, as mentioned, the, the slightly fragmented nature of the sites, um, some sites, some forest sites have access problems. Um, and in, in a lot of cases, access is through an inability or access limitations is through an inability or, or lack of ability to justify the cost or expense of road infrastructure for that site. So in order to access those sites, um, you know, we would have to use smaller planting equipment. Many of these sites we will be able to access with our, with our, our wood chipper and tractor, effectively because it, it's, it's smaller, it it's, has a tighter turning radius, it's, it's agricultural equipment. So we can get into these smaller sites with our, with our plant and we can chip directly from the forest site um, and it re sometimes reduces haulage and handling costs. Um, when we store at, at our storage site, only suitably dry material can be stored to avoid losses. As in, if it's above thirty or thirty-five percent moisture content, the material will start to uh, it will start to heat and uh, self-heat and decompose, um, like like cut grass from a lawn. Uh, the material is loaded from the stockpiles in the sheds or, or outside into awaiting trailers and it is delivered to the end user. Um, and our end users, similar to where we are uh, located, our end users are typically in the northwest, um, but we also supply a little bit further afield. And our end users range from large industrial users, and specifically on the wood chip side, uh, large steam plants with large processing equipment, typically 30 megawatts to the power generation of over 100 megawatts. But we do cater for right down to smaller hospitals, care homes, leisure centers of 100 to 150 kilowatts. So it's quite a broad range of markets on the wood chip side. And then with the firewood, we also deal with the uh, with the domestic and residential heating market. So it's, it's a very broad, broad market for us with the, with the biomass. Um, but as an example, a typical site where we, we supply material, a poultry farmer, a 300 kilowatt system, this farmer produces um, produces chickens for the for the, 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 the food market. Uh, they have two chicken houses. Uh, they, they provide animal husbandry for 70,000 chickens at a time. 
Um, and not only have the fuel savings over their existing fossil fuel, gas or oil, they also have an SSRH, um, a, 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 an income, a feed-in tariff for, the, for, for using biomass, but also they, they have huge uh, CO2 savings per annum. Um, and this is just a, a, a single example, one small site, and this can be replicated on, on, on a large number of sites, um, particularly on, on agricultural settings um, in, the, in the northwest of Ireland. When we began um, with LEADER in particular, when we, we, we took the step further from uh, firewood processing in 2009, we approached LEADER uh, to further develop our business. As it was a, a little unknown, we started off very small with a, with a small uh, wood chip machine uh, capable of producing wood chip for the, for the biomass heating market. For this, we received 50% CapEx funding and it, it allowed us to get a feel for the market and, and, and get a bit of material rolling up to uh, about 1,500 or 2,000 tonnes per annum. In 2011, 11, we took we again approached leader. We, as you can see in the in the image, uh, we the further equipped the machine with a telescopic crane to assist in handling the material into the chipper. And then in, in 2017, 2018, we done a large application to leader to to upgrade our plant. As I mentioned earlier, the step change to allow us to go to uh, 10,000 tons per annum currently, but but as I said, we have we have significantly more capacity with that machine. And um, again, we received 50% capex funding for this project. The capex was 150, 150,000, so the the leader of support was 75,000. But this, in its current in its current form, with with our current output, we're we're spending the same amount of money in the local economy on raw materials. So it's kind of to us, leader has it's it's like the old adage, you know, instead of giving a man a fish to feed him for a day, they've they've taught us how to fish and they're feeding us for our lifetime. So it's it that's how how we see leader works and it's 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 hugely uh, beneficial for the the, the local economy. Um, as mentioned earlier, we're part of the Wood Fuel Quality Assurance Scheme. This ensures our sustainability, um, both in terms of um, our sourcing of material, where the material is sourced, its, its supply chain, its chain of custody documentation. Um, as mentioned, the, the, the forest material, it's coming from commercial forest sales, where trees are planted, harvested, and replanted on ongoing cycles. Um, and we, keep, we, we are audited annually by an independent uh, auditor we also and they they assess our chain of custody documentation they also assess our moisture content records where we do in-house testing uh, for moisture content and particle sizing and i suppose the driver for us um not only as a as a, an add-on you know on a diversification for us and ourselves as a, as a business and a family um and our, our firm I, I made a bit large driver for us is the, uh, I suppose, the sustainability element of it and what we see and giving back to the local economy and what we see as being a, a positive for, for the region. So, like in, in terms, like, you know, in, in simple terms, to look at the fossil fuel displacement, imported fossil fuels, um, we have a significant resource in Leitrim and in surrounding counties in the northwest region of Ireland, significant forestry resource. If it's, you know, if we, if we tap into that for, for biomass, um, for as an example here, if we process one truckload into wood chip, we consume 25 litres of diesel in doing so, but that truckload will go on to displace 10,000 litres of, of fossil fuel oil. So it's, it's a huge, sustainability saving in terms of a carbon emission perspective but also in terms of our, our local economy and um, we're not import we're not spending money as a local economy on imported fossil fuels we're, we're utilizing a resource that is that is homegrown and um, and when we scale that up um to a larger can you run picture, up the, can you? we'll do just some, to a, a larger picture we look at um over a week we can displace up to 160,000 litres and that's on a weekly basis, that would be sufficient to heat 36% of the households in County Leitrim. And our annual displacement is typically 4 million litres of fossil fuel oil. And that's with, with homegrown uh, forest resource. 
keeping the money in the in the local economy. So a real driver is is rural sustainability. Thanks very much.